Hi, my name is Katie, and I'm one of the librarians with Lone Star College North Harris. In today's Making Zines episode, we're going to be looking at the different methods for binding zines. The second method is the stab stitch binding, where you stab down through the pages to create a spine. We'll need a few different supplies in order to get started. So we'll need the pages for your zine, like these here, or you can just use some blank pages. We'll need some kind of cover stock if you're going to actually make a cover for this project, but you don't have to. You'll need some basic supplies like a ruler, scissors, pencil. You're also going to need some kind of sharp object to punch your holes through. So I like using either a large safety pen or even a push pen like this here. You might need some binder clips in order to hold the pages together. And you'll need a needle that's big enough for your thread to actually go through. So you can use any kind of actual string, but I like using embroidery floss because it's thick, it's very strong, comes in a wide variety of colors, and it's relatively inexpensive. The next type of binding that we'll be looking at is the stab stitch. The stab stitch is called that because it goes right through the pages of your zine. So you're going to stab through it with the holes, and the stitching shows up on the spine. So it goes from the very simple kind of stab stitches, like this, all the way to more complex, like the tortoise shell here. So the stab stitch is great for a variety of page sizes, so if you have a thicker zine, this is one way to get it bound. Today we'll be working on the four hole stab stitch method. For the four hole binding method, we're going to first go ahead and grab our pages for our zine. So for this method, you can use actually any size pages that you'd like. For our ease, I'm just going to go ahead and cut these pages in half. So I'm just going to fold my regular sheets of paper in half first. And then use that fold line in order to cut them in half. We have our pages all cut and uniform, or as close as we can get them. We can go ahead and set those aside. For this method, we are going to want to cut one more page though. So we're going to make ourselves one page that's not actually part of our zine. So I'm just going to fold that and cut this in half as well. This extra sheet we're going to put aside, it's going to be the template that we're going to use for our holes. If you want to add a cover, you can grab a piece of cardstock or another piece of cover stock that you would like to use and cut those to approximately the same size as our pages. our covers cut out, we can go ahead and put one in front of our pages and one behind our pages. And we do want our pages as even as possible, but it's okay if they're a little off. We just tap them to get them into place. So we have our pages for our zine. We're ready to work on the binding. So we can set those aside. Next we're going to grab our piece of template paper, so that extra page we cut out. We're going to go ahead and mark our four holes for our four stitches. We can do this by folding this paper to get our lines. So first we can fold it in half. We can open it up and now we're going to fold the top down to that middle crease. Then we're going to fold the bottom into the middle crease as well. One more time, pull the top into the middle. And 
the bottom into the middle. So now we open it back up and we're going to see that we have a page with a lot of creases on it. And these are what we're going to use to get evenly spaced holes for our project. So for stab stitching, we're going to put our four holes down the side. First thing we need to do is come a little ways off to create the spine for our book. So we're going to go ahead and measure one half inch from the left hand side of our project. I'm going to measure one half inch. straight and I'm going to go ahead and draw that line right at the half inch mark. Now on our line we're going to go ahead and put the spaces for our holes. So first on the bottom we're going to go ahead and mark that first one then go two dots up and two more lines up and two more on that very first top line. That should give us four evenly spaced holes. Hey, okay, now it's time to grab our sharp pointy object. So we can either use a push pin or a straight safety pin. And I'm just gonna poke that hole on through. Generally find I have to hold it in the air in order to stab better. But just be careful when you're putting sharp objects near your fingers. Now I'm just going to go ahead and use my needle and work back through each of these holes. Just to make sure that my hole is a little bigger. This will make the next step easier. Now that we have the holes ready and our template, we can start putting the holes onto our pages. So, first thing, I'm going to grab my first page on my cover, and I'm going to line that template up with the left side of my page, and I'm going to mark my holes. We're just going to mark those right through the dots on our template page. Now that we have our dots marked, we're going to go ahead and punch to make those holes. Again, I want to make my holes a little bit larger, so I'm coming back with the safety pin just to make sure that these holes get a little bigger, particularly in my cover pages. I'm going to keep doing the same thing for every page. So for some of the regular pages, you might find that you can do two or three at a time when you punch the holes, but the more than that and you start getting the holes offline and it becomes too tough to punch. So just take them step by step.
Once we have all our holes punched, we can put our pages back together. So now we want to make sure that our holes are all lined up. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to push it through one of those holes. And I might have to kind of shift my pages to make sure that they're all in line. I'm going to kind of straighten my pages as I do this with the needle in the hole. Now I can grab some binder clips or hair clips or anything that you have really that can hold those pages together. I'm going to clamp it on the three sides that I'm not going to stitch. So the right side and the top and the bottom. And we're going to go ahead and pull out that needle now. Now, because I do want to make sure my holes are a good size, I'm going to go ahead and poke the needle on through each of my four holes a few times. So I'm just going to pull that needle through. This is just to make sure that my hole is big enough for my needle and thread to pass through when I'm actually working on stitching it. our holes sorted, we might need to clean up our pages. So you can see I've got a little overhang here that I'm just going to trim right off. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we just want it to be as clean as possible. Now we're going to grab our thread. And we do want to have quite a bit of thread for this because we're going to be going around the sides. So I'm going to cut my length between three and four, so probably around four lengths of my book. Cut that off there, and I'll have my thread. So I need to thread my needle. Again, this part can be tricky depending on what thread you're using. Just get it through the eye of the needle, and you're gonna pull it through and leave about a two inch tail. Don't tie a knot or anything. Now that we have our thread ready, we're gonna get started on the third hole down. So we're actually going to open up our pages and kind of get to a page in the middle. And we're going to insert our needle from the inside and come up through the middle of the book to the top page. We're going to keep pulling our thread through until we leave a tail behind that's about two inches long. We can just leave that hanging down. Now we're going to turn the book over and we're going to come back up through that same hole that we're already working with, so hole number three. We're going to pull it around the spine of the book. We're going to pull that stitch tight and you can kind of move it into place. Next, we're going to go down, go into the bottom hole and stab right through. Pull it tight. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go around the outside edge and go back down through that same hole and pull our stitch tight. Next, we're going to come around the bottom of the book. So we're going to finish out that spine. So we're going to take it down and then come back through that same stitch one more time. Make sure your thread is towards the bottom. And we're going to pull that tight. And you can kind of straighten it up and tighten it. Okay, now we're going to come back and go down through that third hole one more time. And pull that up. Having a longer thread does mean it gets a few places on you, but just keep an eye and make sure you straighten it out as you need to. Now we're going to keep going up, go down through the second hole. We're going to go around the spine again. 
go down through that same hole one more time. And pull our stitch tight. And keep going up. We're gonna go through the top hole. Stab through. And tight. And we're gonna go around the spine again. Come back through that same hole one more time. Now we're going to do the same thing to the top that we did to the bottom. So we're going to go over the top edge of the book. So pull our thread around the top and then go through that same hole one more time. Pull it straight and tighten it up. Now we're going to finish our stitching and go back down to the next stitch. See, we have one more. We're going to come back through that third hole. Now I'm going to need to tie off my stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and push my needle right under that stitch for the third. So right at that corner there where those two pieces come together. And to knot it, I'm just going to pull my needle through that loop of thread before I pull it tight. I'm going to do this one more time just to make sure that my knot is in place. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two ends and I'm going to knot those two together. So I'm going to go ahead and knot the tail to my end here. trim off the excess with some scissors. If I rub that knot, that's going to just keep that knot from coming apart. So I can unclip my pages and my book should be bound. And that's a four hole stab stitch binding.